So that was my lame attempt at channeling my inner Safa. But this bike, man, it's so fun to descend. Can't help it. So the beginning of this video was obviously a joke. But if you're one of those people who gets upset by how other people decides to stop their bike, eh, the Rim Brake Defense Force t-shirts and the Disc Brake Death Squad t-shirts are still available. Anyway, my Hope Rotors has recently just gone below the wear limit and it was time for a replacement. And that's pretty much the first point I want to drive home in this video. These thin disc rotors are not like what you found on a bike or a car that lasts like forever or at least a very long time. Depending on what terrain you ride in, the weather, what kind of brake pads you use, how good you take care of your stuff, uh, brake rotors can wear really quick. And I made a mistake myself when I went over to disc brakes I didn't check my rotors basically at all and they went way below the wear limit and they started warping very easily and they started chewing up my brake pads at an alarming rate. So it's definitely a good idea to keep an eye on that. The wear limit is usually printed on the rotors. In the case of the My Hope rotors there are a minimum thickness of 1.4 millimeters. I know the Shimano has a minimum thickness of 1.5 and the new rotors I'm going to talk about today has a minimum of 1.6 millimeters. Now I don't really know of any other way to check the wear limit than with these kinds of calipers. But for reference my Hope rotors that just hit the minimum 1.4 uh, they actually are about 6 grams lighter per rotor than when they were new. I don't know if that really helps anyone but yeah uh, cheap sets of calibers you can find them on Amazon it's always a good thing to have in your arsenal. So first I just have to say I've been super happy with the Hope rotors. I had to true them once uh, which I did a video about but other than that I have no real complaints. I think I have about 4500 Ks on them now and that might seem pretty high in terms of wear rate but that's about the same that I got out of my Shimano rotors. Had I lived in a flat area I would probably would have gotten at least to double the distance. But I'm lucky enough that I always ride in the mountains and I basically have at least one 5k descent on every ride. And often these are very steep and narrow descents and there could be a lot of debris on those small mountain roads so I need to be on the brakes a lot. So I would guess that I'm using my brake rotors and brakes a lot more than the average person. And I really love descending so there's definitely some heartbreaking going on from time to time. I just get that rush that I used to get from snowboarding back in the days. Yeah, love it. Anyway, I could easily have gotten a new set of these Hope rotors and be on my way. But I've always been curious about the Carbon Tie X Rotor Steel Carbon Jabada Bing Boom. They have the same floating designs as the Hope Rotors with the big rivets, but they are a lot lighter. The only problem is the price, which always made me look elsewhere. But this time I had a chunk of Amazon credit, thanks to all you guys, and I found the Carbon Tie Rotors on Amazon Marketplace. So I thought, why not? And that is how the whole fake disc rotor part of this story began. Now I knew there were fake rotors floating around. Carbon Tie actually put out a warning on their website some time ago, warning about this, especially for AliExpress, uh, where the price seemed a bit too good to be true. The ones I found on Amazon though, actually had the price just slightly above the normal retail price so I thought well can't be fake right turns out even though I ordered 140 and 160 millimeter rotor from the same listing they came from two different vendors and even though it looked like it was from uh, America uh, the 160 millimeter rotor actually came all the way from Hong Kong in the end and when I compare that with the 140 rotor I started getting a bit suspicious the finishing on the Carbon Spider was definitely not at the same level as the 140 rotor. The branding was the all carbon tie branding, which it's not 
super strange since I think the first version of this rotor had the old branding, but the carbon finishing around the rivets didn't at all feel at the same level. Even the steel rotor part itself had kind of a different touch to it. Hard to explain this in words, but just touching the metal felt kind of different. Some voodoo shit, I don't know. So I didn't want to risk anything and decided to contact Carbon Tie directly. I uh, sent them some pictures and serial numbers. And I came back and basically said that there's a 90% chance that that 160mm rotor is a fake one. So if you're looking, uh, definitely buy these from an authorized dealer like uh, R2 bike or uh, fair wheel bikes in the US and stay away from stuff like Amazon, AliExpress and eBay even. Just to be on the safe side. In the end though, Carbon Tie was very kind to me and they let me buy a set of rotors directly from them. So now I'm definitely sure that I have a set of genuine Carbon Tie X rotor steel carbon 2. I think that's the full name. Weird. And looking at this, the general finish is just so much nicer than that fake one. I have sent it back. I'm still waiting for a refund. I'm not holding my breath. The listing is gone from Amazon, at least. So that was a long story. Sorry about that. Let's move on to the fun part. 66 grams for the 140 millimeter rotor and only 80 grams for the 160 millimeter one. That is a 26 gram saving over my worn Hope rotors and about 36 grams over a new set. What I was really curious about is how they would perform on the descents I do. The carbon spiders shouldn't be able to move as much heat, so I was half expecting to be greeted with a nice rubbing sound after a long descent. But I have to say, I haven't had any rubbing at all, and I've done quite a few descents where I really needed to be uh, heavy on the braking, but nothing. Not a squeal, not a rubby dub dub. They are as straight as they were when I put them on. And the braking performance is just as good as my Hope rotors, which in turn is just as good as my Shimano rotors. But I only have about 900k on these yet, and I weigh like 61, 62 kilos. So take that into account. But yeah, I'm very happy this far. If the amateur in me could speculate a bit, I think they're a slightly thicker rotor. I think I measured it at 1.76 millimeters out of the box. That is slightly thicker than both the Hope ones and the Shimano rotors. So I think that helps with handling that heat. But like I said in the beginning, the minimum thickness is 1.6 millimeter. So I don't expect these to have much longer life than any other rotors. So what is the point of paying so much more for these? Well, it's the weight. But is that really worth it? No. Yes. Well, I leave it up to you. For me, I think you can guess my answer. So what about the Ashima rotors? That has been recommended to me a lot down in the comments during the years. But while I personally haven't owned them myself, I have a friend who used to live here that I roll with all the time. And he rolled the same roads as me, same descents. And he was not so happy with his Ashima rotors and they didn't look good after a couple of descents. So that's why I've never really gotten into those. Now lastly, that 26 gram saved will actually not make this bike any lighter. And that is because I went back to the Arundel mandible bottle cages. The tune bottle cages, while they are nice, light and all that stuff, there's just no match for the mandibles. They hold the bottle so secure, but they're still easy to remove. And they keep your bottles from rattling against the frame, which is a big deal in my case. So plus 26 grams there uh, until I take the Dremel to my other cage there. And eventually that will happen. Definitely. So I'm definitely not trying to sell anyone uh, some ridiculously priced disc rotors. But if there's anything you should take away from this video is just keep an eye on the wear rate of your disc rotors and don't buy fake disc rotors. Especially if they're more expensive than the genuine ones.
we need to do that.